Johnson to join this fray. And he's got 28 more laps to get up here. Here comes Hornaday trying, can't do it. Meanwhile, there is Setzer. I would think the danger for Rush now is that the B3 fast guy. Oh, we back. got a crash. Hornaday's in the ball. ball. I was about to say that Hornaday would get impatient here and move him out of the way. Apparently, it didn't unfold quite that way. The championship point leader, Ron Hornaday, has backed last week's winner and the five-time winner into the concrete. And we're under caution again with just 26 laps to go. Wow. Look at the damage on that Napa Chevrolet. They whacked her, didn't they? He did whack her. There's how it happened. Lonnie Rush leads him down into one. Sprague on the inside of the 16 of Hornaday. Contact between Sprague and Hornaday, and bam! Hornaday in the wall hard. Hornaday will have a word with Sprague when this one's over. Here's the uh, view from Tony Roper's truck. That doesn't shed much new light. But Sprague got the right front into Hornaday's left rear, and into the wall goes Ron that between the two men who are battling for the championship. Here last comes Hornaday down Pitt Road. Right now there's 20 cars on the lead lap. So this he's best he can go his 20th spot. Marty's down there. Now I gotta be honest guys, I feel like I'm in a bit of a danger zone. I'm right between Jack Sprague's pit and Ron Hornaday's pit. And Hornaday is climbing out. He's not happy. And here he comes. We'll stay with he, he he just wants to go over and say something to Dennis. This is not the kind of scene we were hoping for. These guys have been into each other before. Things are getting a little physical. A couple of crew members, NASCAR officials have stepped in. Ron Hornaday being pulled back over by his crew. And I think calmer heads are finally going to prevail down here. But you got to understand, I'm sure Ron Hornaday is upset because of the contact. We'll see if we can get a word with him as soon as he gets done talking to his team. I knew right away, Marty, that he wasn't going to stop and talk to you, that he had somebody he wanted to talk to worse than you. Here's how it happened. Here's what he's mad about. Well, when uh, Sprague looks at the replay, then he can decide whether he should feel guilty. Meanwhile, Hornaday's climbing back in and uh, to fix this truck. Let me go back out there. Ron restart Hornaday on ESPN. A little unhappy here this evening. The championship point leader into the wall. That's Don Hawk, the president of Dale Earnhardt Incorporated there in the black jacket trying to calm his driver down before he goes back on the racetrack. Hornaday says, it's going to take him a few laps to get this baby back on the racetrack. I'm going to go get my uh, piece said to the other guy's team. We'll take a break and be right back. Raceway Park for the lead. Jack Sprague making contact on the left side of Lonnie Rush's truck. Rush comes right back under Sprague's tailgate. Remember, the tires on the number 10 truck are old and worn. Sprague's got fresher tires and was able to drive right by Ron Lonnie. Lonnie put up a heck of a fight and comes back on the inside. Wow. Did you see that? Did you see Rush go right back by him? I can't believe that. Man, I'll tell you what, that kid is driving his heart out. And here comes Setzer to challenge Sprague. A three-truck battle for the lead with 19 laps to go. Everything we know about racing says that's what should happen. Rush goes up into the wall. There goes Roper by. He gave it his best shot and overdrove it down into turn one. Exactly right. Setzer coming after Sprague. Chevy and Dodge for the lead. Hornaday out of the picture after Sprague got into him going into turn one, bringing out the caution flag. More on Setzer for Bill Weller. Well, it's been a great run for Dennis Setzer. Two sets of right side tires. And I talked to Keselowski about 10, 20 laps ago. Now his driver looks underneath the 24, trying to challenge for the lead. I said, how good is Setzer in that 29 run? Setzer in 
to the wall goes Sprague. Sprague keeps going. Setzer turns it around. He gave it a shot in turn two. Got it to Sprague. Couldn't save it. Loot the truck. Wild. I'll tell you what. <laughs> and Sprague, I think, made some contact with the wall. The question is how much damage to Jack Sprague's truck. And can Roper perhaps run him down? Meanwhile, the battles continue as the 19 of Reigns bowls his way past the three to take over ninth spot and drop Sauter to the tail end of the top ten. Wild, wild truck competition here this evening. That's Biffle working on Barfield for fifth and sixth. Well, Jack Sprague has pulled here to victory lane on the front stretch at Indianapolis Raceway Park, takes off the helmet and the straps, puts on the cap, and is about to climb from the truck, and we'll see what reaction he gets from the fans here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. And it is, as you might expect, a mixed reaction. But Jack Sprague is in victory lane, and congratulations from his truck owner, John Hendrick, and a brief conversation, and we'll step in here. And a handshake, and first of all, uh, congratulations on a big win for you. Well, first of all, you know, that I feel terrible about that deal with Ron. Uh, I was on the bottom lane. I was underneath him. I don't feel like I did anything wrong yet. You know, I was underneath him. I needed to get a lane. And uh, the GMAC Chevrolet ran awesome. You know, I got to thank GMAC Financial Services and Chevrolet and uh, Quaker State and GM Protection Plan and uh, Rotary Lift and Haas Machinery and everybody involved in this deal and everybody at Hendrick Motorsports. The guys gave me a great truck. Like I said, I hate I got into it with Ron, but I don't feel like I was wrong. Walk us through that a little bit then, Jack. Tell us from your point of view what happened. Well, I got underneath him coming off uh, four here and went down the front stretch and I was up to his door and I went into one on the bottom in the bottom lane and he was coming down. I seen him. I got in the brakes, but I couldn't go no lower. I was in the bottom lane, so... Uh, you know, I don't, there's nothing else I could have done. He, he, I feel like he should have gave me a lane. He didn't, so, uh, you know. And you were, as fireworks explode here at IRP, you were in the middle of it a, a couple of times involved uh, with the 29 truck when he was battling for the lead with you. Yeah, the 29 got under me and got into me going in the one same deal, and I about bit it, but, uh, you know, it surely wasn't anything intentional. I think he knows that, but he needed to give me some room, you know. I mean, that's just fair play. And uh, you got the points lead back here tonight. Well, like I said, it's a win and it's great for everybody involved, but it's a little tainted over the situation. And, you know, I surely would, didn't want that to happen, but I don't feel like I was wrong either. Okay, congratulations. Thank you. That's Jack Sprague, and as you can tell, uh, mixed reaction here from the crowd uh, behind us here on the front stretch at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Here's the moment in which it all happened in turn one, and Hornaday's into the concrete, and Sprague is on his way to victory lane. From the other side of the story, here's Marty. Well, I'm down here with Fred Graves. Uh, Ron Hornaday's already went back to the hauler. You just heard what uh, Jack had to say. I felt like Al Bernstein and you were Mills Lane. Well, uh, you know, we really couldn't see it that good from down here in the pits, and we're going to go back and review the tapes. But, uh, you know, um, it's unfortunate it happened. It was a good race between the two of them, and uh, um, that's all I can say. I really, I really can't talk intelligently about it because I really couldn't see it from here. Okay, guys, we'll send it back up top. 